Do you know the difference between formal and informal English? Well, I'm here to help you out. Or, I'm here to assist you. Hello and welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about formal and informal English. But which one should you use? Well, it depends on the situation. If you're talking to your friends, you probably don't want to speak formally. That's when you use informal English. However, if you're at university and you're talking to your professor, or if it's a business meeting and you're talking with your business partner, or if you're at work and you're talking with your colleagues under professional circumstances, those are situations where you may want to speak formally. So it's very important to know what words and phrases are considered informal and what words and phrases, what alternatives are formal. That is what we're going to do. We're going to learn 20 pairs of formal versus informal vocabulary and phrases so that you would know which one to use depending on the situation. Are you ready? Let's start with the first pair. You know what help out means, right? If somebody asks for help, you may want to go and help them out. For example, can you help me out with this task? Can you help me out with this task? There's a very difficult task I'm dealing with and I need help. So I look to you and say, Hey, would you mind helping me out with this task? Help out is informal. A formal alternative is assist, assist. For example, can you assist me with this task? Can you help me out? Can you assist me with this task? So if you're talking to your best friend, you may say, hey Jack, can you help me out? But if you're at work and you're talking to your manager, you may want to say, sir, can you assist me with this task? Next word is give. He gave me the information. Now, instead of give, we can say provide. But if you use provide, you need the preposition with. Provide somebody with something. He gave me the information. He provided me with the information. Provide somebody with something. That's formal. I need more time to finish the work. I need more time. Need is rather informal. A formal alternative is require. I require more time to finish the work. Now, instead of more, if I say additional, it's going to sound even more formal. I require additional time to finish the work. Instead of finish, if I say complete, it's going to be even more formal. I require additional work to complete the work. Now, for a second, compare these two sentences. I need more time to finish the work. I require additional time to complete the work. You see the difference? Another verb, which is very useful in everyday conversation is tell. I will tell you about the event later. A formal alternative is inform. I will inform you about the event later. Now, when you go to an event, they may offer some free drinks, right? You can say the drinks are free, but you can use a formal alternative instead of free. And that is complimentary. Complimentary is a formal way of saying something is included in the price. They gave us free drinks at the event. They provided complimentary drinks at the event. You book a hotel and you're wondering whether breakfast is free or not, whether breakfast is included in the price or not. You can call them and say, excuse me, I was wondering if breakfast is complimentary. I was wondering if breakfast is complimentary means I was wondering if breakfast is included in the price. Basically, it means I was wondering if I booked the room is breakfast going to be free or not? Next word is think about. Now, I'll think about what you said. This is kind of informal, but if I want to make it formal, I can say, I will consider what you said. Instead of think about, I can use consider. I will consider what you said. Now, to make it even more formal, instead of said, I can say mention. I will consider what you mentioned. Compare the two sentences. I'll think about what you said. I will consider what you mentioned. One is clearly very useful in everyday conversation. The other one is good for formal situations. A very interesting phrasal verb is deal with. You deal with the problem, right? You deal with a difficult thing, like a challenge or a problem. Look at this example. I will deal with the problem later. Now, deal with is a phrasal verb and phrasal verbs are considered informal. Now, a formal alternative to deal with is handle. I will handle the problem later. Now, handle the problem. Instead of problem, I can use issue. I'll handle the issue later. Look at these two sentences. I'll deal with the problem later. I'll handle the issue later. Next phrasal verb is leave out. If you leave something out, you fail to include it. It basically means you mistakenly did not include something you should have included. For example, she left out some details from the report. She left out 
some details from the report. Passive leave is left. Now, leave out is a phrasal verb. And as I said earlier, phrasal verbs are informal. Instead of leave out, what can I say? Omit, omit. She omitted some details from the report. Instead of some, if I say certain, it's gonna make it more formal. She omitted certain details from the report. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with the verb buy. We buy things every day. Look at this example. He bought a new house. Now, instead of buy, what can I say so that it's more formal? That's right. I can say purchase, but another alternative is acquire, acquire. He acquired a new house. Now, instead of house, if I say property, it's gonna be more formal. He acquired a new property. Now listen, you should be careful with these alternatives. You cannot just simply use one instead of the other. It really depends on the situation. For example, if I go out and buy milk, I can't come home and say, yes, I acquired some milk today. No, you did not. You didn't acquire milk, you bought milk. But if you buy a piece of land or if your company buys another company, then that is called acquire. So you need to be careful about all these details. All right, next one. You have a meeting and a few of the people who were supposed to show up are not there. So you decide to call off the meeting. Now, call off is a phrasal verb, which means cancel. And this is considered informal. You can call off the meeting or a formal alternative is to use the verb cancel. You can cancel the meeting. They called off the meeting. They canceled the meeting. All right. So far, we have learned 10 pairs of formal versus informal words. Now, I have a paragraph for you. We're going to read this paragraph together. In this paragraph, I've used informal words. And together, we're going to change informal words to formal words so that we have a more formal paragraph. Are you ready? Let's have a look at this paragraph. Yesterday, my manager asked me to help out with a project. I gave her the information she needed, but I told her I need more time to finish the work. She said she'd think about it and would tell me later. At the event, they gave us free drinks, which was nice. There were some details I left out of the report, but I will deal with those later. By the way, my friend just bought a house and the meeting for tomorrow was called off. That was an interesting text and the tone is informal. Let's swap some of these informal words for the formal alternatives. Instead of help out, we can say assist. My manager asked me to assist with the project. Instead of gave, we can say provided. I provided her. Instead of needed, we say required. I provided her with the information she required. I told her I need more time. I told her I require additional time. She would think about it, she would consider it, would tell me later, would inform me later. They gave us free drinks. They provided us with complimentary drinks. I left out of the report. I omitted from the report. I'll deal with those later. I'll handle those later. My friend just bought a new house, acquired a new house, or better yet, acquired a new property. The meeting was called off. It was canceled. And now look at this text. It's more formal than the previous one, right? If you want to read it, pause the video, read the text, and then play the video so we continue with the next words. All right, let's continue the lesson. But before we do that, let me tell you something. Do you want to have the summary of this lesson with all the words, all the example sentences, with some beautiful pictures in a PDF file? Or better yet, do you want to have the summary of all of my YouTube channel videos in one PDF file? That's right, you can download my Ultimate English book. But how much is it? Well. It's for free for my YouTube subscribers. How can you get it? Simply click on the link above this video, go to my website, type in your name, your email address, your country, and click download. You will receive the link in your inbox. All right, enough. Let's get back to the lesson. And let's learn 10 other pairs of formal versus informal vocabulary. All right, let's start the second part of this lesson. Look at this sentence. Let's go on with the discussion. Now, go on is a phrasal verb. Instead of go on, you can simply say continue, continue, and that's more formal. Let's go on with the discussion. Let's continue with the discussion. Now, let's say you were supposed to have a meeting today, but then something happened that you pushed the meeting to the next week. Here, you can use the phrasal verb put off. We need to put off the meeting until next week. We need to put off the meeting until next week. Now, instead of put off until next week, you can say postpone. We need to postpone the meeting until next week. Now, let's say there is an issue that some people are trying to solve. Now, what they will need to do is to look into the issue. They're going to look into the issue to see if they can solve it. But instead of look into, you can use the formal verb 
investigate. They are going to investigate the issue. Look at this sentence. I will find out more about the project. So there is a new project and you don't know much. What you need to do is to find out more about this project. Now, instead of find out, you can use the formal verb discover. I will discover more about this project. I'm pretty sure you can see a pattern here. Phrasal verbs are informal and you can replace them with a simple verb that makes it more formal. Here's another example. Look at this. He showed up late for the party. So there was a party at 8 p.m. and he showed up at around 9. He showed up late. Now show up is a phrasal verb. Let's replace it with a simple verb arrive. He arrived late for the party. Just simply replacing a phrasal verb with a simple verb to make it more formal. Here's another example. I'm going to ask for help. There is something you're dealing with and it's really difficult and you can't do it alone. So you're going to ask for help. Now instead of ask for, which is a phrasal verb, you can simply say request. I'm going to request help. Now instead of help, if you say assistance, you make it even more formal. I'm going to request assistance. If somebody makes an offer and you don't like it, you can simply say no. For example, she said no to the offer, but say no is not formal. Under formal circumstances, you may want to say decline. She declined the offer. She said no to the offer. She declined the offer. Look at this one. He talked about his new idea. Talked about. Instead of talk about, we can say elaborate on. Elaborate on something means to explain more, to provide more information about something. He elaborated on his new idea. He talked about his new idea. He elaborated on his new idea. What about the simple verb say? Well, the passive say is said. Look at this. He said he would come later. Instead of say, you can use state. The passive state is stated. He stated that he would come later. Now, instead of come, if you say arrive, it's going to be more formal. He stated that he would arrive later. You're at a business meeting and instead of saying, hey, yeah, he said he would come later, you can say, he stated that he would arrive later. Last but not least, I hope you're enjoying this lesson. Let's get to the last pair. Get in touch. I will get in touch with you soon. That means I'll contact you soon. You will hear from me soon. I'll get in touch with you soon. Instead of get in touch with, what can I say? A simple verb, contact. I will contact you soon. Now, instead of soon, if you say shortly, it's gonna sound even more formal. I will contact you shortly. I'll get in touch with you soon. I'll contact you shortly. And now to finish this lesson, I have another paragraph for you. Let's have a look. After the break, we decided to go on with the discussion, even though we had to put off the meeting until next week. They're planning to look into the issue and I'll find out more about the project later. He showed up late for the party and I had to ask for help to sort things out. She said no to the offer, but we still talked about her new idea. He said he would come later and I'll get in touch with you soon to update you. As you can see, most of the verbs in this paragraph are informal. Let's substitute them with the formal alternatives. And that's it. If you want to read this paragraph, pause the video and have a look. Now this paragraph sounds more formal. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. As always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, click subscribe. See ya.